Y'all are really out here testing these animals, and there's so much I could say to this video, but instead, let me tell you a story. In 2004, there was a gorilla named Bakito who lived at a zoo in Berlin, and he escaped his enclosure but was able to be escorted back without any real incident. Sometime after, he was transferred to a new zoo in Rotterdam, Netherlands. One day in 2007, children ticked him off by throwing rocks at him, which prompted him to escape his enclosure once again. I'm not sure what happened to these kids, but he ended up attacking a woman who regularly visited the zoo. Apparently, the woman made consistent eye contact with Bakito whenever she visited, and if you've ever seen Casual Geographic's video, you know that's a bad sign. Gorillas will often interpret eye contact as a form of challenge or aggression. She wasn't even the one who made him mad, but because he recognized her, he beat the brakes out of her, causing several fractures and biting her a bunch of times. And that was a gorilla. This video shows a chimpanzee, which is a much worse situation. Stop testing these animals, please. Yeah, taunting an animal that's locked up is kind of a harsh move to begin with. Like, was that lady off her meds that day or what? Yo, what is up my good people and welcome back for a brand new video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for your boy. And as usual in this video, we're going to be watching some bizarre and creepy TikToks. All right, with all that being said, let's get right back into it. Why you should never do this. This is 17 year old Michael Dumas. He was on a church trip to Florida with some of his friends. While on this trip, they went to Pompano Beach and he would be buried in the sand as you see here. He'd soon be unburied and all would be well until later that night when he would wake up in the middle of the night and be itching like crazy and sweating. At first, this would be labeled as an ear infection and he would be sent home with drops, but it would soon be obvious that that's not what it was as he started to develop these raised bumpy rashes and he became pretty lethargic, just wanting to sleep all the time. It got even worse to the point where he was having these big nasty blisters. And that's when he'd finally be diagnosed with cutaneous larva migraines, which is pretty much dog or cat hookworm. So pretty much these work by the dog or the cat pooping in the sand and contaminating it. And then not long after these microscopic larva hatch and then you step in this contaminated sand and you end up looking like Michael. After all of this, he ended up developing a staph infection as well. And if it's not bad enough just him getting infected, five others from this trip got infected with hookworm as well. But I don't think it mattered if he was buried or not. If all the other guys got it, I'm pretty sure he was going to get it as well. But also, this is exactly why it's important to always remember to have like some sandals or flip-flops when at the beach. Katy Perry, who is a singer, and her husband, I believe his name is Orlando Bloom, bought the Bragg's Apple Cider Vinegar Company, and they have teamed up with Bill Gates. Mm and now are using his apil apples. Now, let me sort of educate the audience a little bit about what apil is, mm. A-P-E-E-L. It uses monosaccharides and disaccharides, which are byproducts of all oil processing. The byproducts of soybean oil, canola oil, which are very harmful to the body. And these byproducts are trans fats. This is really important. Trans fats in most countries, all of Europe, are banned. And the reason why they're banned is because they cause coronary heart disease. What's your position as somebody who understands the land, respects the land, who's growing, showing people how to grow? What's your position on watching somebody buy this amount of land with that type of intention behind it? Yeah, this doesn't surprise me all that much. Why does this man just want to have full control over everything that we eat? We're not your dang lab rats, Bill. Leave our food supply alone. So a law student got her eyeballs tattooed blue and purple to copy an influencer that she followed, and now she's going blind. The mother of five was inspired by Blue-Eyed Dragon, a.k.a. Amber Luke, who actually herself went blind for three weeks after getting the tattoos in her eyeballs done, but she recovered. Now, Anaya said that she was in awe of it and decided that she was just going to get one eye done just in case she did go blind. She still had the other eye. Regretfully, she did say she wished she would have listened to her seven-year-old daughter who expressed major concerns about her possibly going blind doing this procedure. But anywho, she did what she wanted to do, and in July of 2020, against all warnings, she went and got just the one eye done. She got her right eye blue. She waited a little while, and in December of 2020, a few months later, she got the other eye 
purple. And within 12 months of those procedures, that's when the vision started acting up and she woke up looking like this. She said she felt and looked like she had gone five rounds with Mr. Mike Tyson. She immediately went to the hospital where they did a biopsy on the eye and regretfully informed her that she was likely going blind. Now she says that she no longer has 20-20 vision. From a distance, she can barely make out features on faces and she continues to have new floaters in her eyes. But don't worry because according to tattoo expert Amber Luke, if your eyeballs are done correctly, you shouldn't go blind from them. But in a world of no regrets, when asked if she regretted this decision, she said if she could go back in time, she would have just done one eye and done it black and just left it at that. Yeah, some influencers out there should not have an influence. I can't imagine why anyone would do this rather than just getting some contacts. How do they even let her walk up in the court like this? Hey, bro, once I start moving, you better get out the way, bro. Get off of that. Get off of that, bro. Come on. What are you doing down there? To call my black ass down. I had an account to 100. What in the world was he even doing under there? Yo, talking about catching a ride. <laughs> like, I didn't know what that was. For a minute there, I thought voices were coming from inside the sewer. You don't need food, you need charging. There are many different ways you can charge the body, like grounding and standing next to trees. You are a biological battery. When you feel quote unquote hungry, this is not hunger. This is the body getting rid of toxins within the colon. It's important that you fast because when you fast, you regenerate your cells after three days. This is real food. Humans possess trichromatic vision, which means we are literally attracted to seek color. Our brains are wired to find electromagnetic, colorful food, not dead, rotten flesh. Hue man hue means an attribute of a color color is light we are light beings manifested into physical form you need to eat electrical food that will charge you this is why you get charged in a court because you're a biological battery and when you get charged in a court you sit in a prison cell a battery cell it's not a coincidence the word veganism rearranged is saving me the power of language shapes our perception of reality by employing more neutral terms on our food, it makes the food more palatable to eat. Rotten milk is cheese, dead flesh is called meat, and a pig's bottom is called ham. If we use the true terminology of these products, we would not eat them. We live in an electromagnetic world, people. You need electromagnetic food. Coming from someone who's an introvert, I definitely agree with this. I can only handle like a few hours being around a lot of people, but then after that, I just need to get away. Hey guys, uh, do you see what I see? Take a look. Do you see any prices at all in front of the drinks? Exactly. There are no prices in front of these drinks. I noticed this about two years ago and I thought it was just this one gas station in Miami. And I was like, oh, they think they're slick, huh? They want you to be so, they think you're so thirsty, you're not gonna pay attention to the price get to the cash register and pay, what, and pay whatever the price is. And then I went to another gas station in a different city and I saw the same thing. I was like, you know what, let me check this gas station. Look at that, <clears throat> no prices. All they have listed is, oh, if you buy two, this is the price. No other prices. Anytime I go into the gas station, I'm always the one standing there like asking the clerk, yo, how much is this? Yo, what about this? But one of the main things to watch out for when it comes to food at a gas station is the expiration date. They'll have candy bars on the shelf that's been expired for like two years. 
like this Airbnb is really cool, um, but like the the closer I look, like it's a bit odd. There's some little odd pieces. It's a really pretty bathroom. It's the bedroom that you know is cause for concern. <laughs> and then. And then I went to iron my clothes. And there is a secret entrance from the hallway. The door is right there. You can't see it, hold on. There's a secret, oh. oh. That goes to the hallway. The washer machine is going off. Yeah, this right here is exactly why I try my best to never get an Airbnb. Yeah, not to mention you're not supposed to have mirrors on the wall facing each other like that. I kind of feel like that's something everyone should know about. This might be one of the crazier stories you'll hear today. This is a declassified document from the CIA, thanks to the Freedom of Information Act. It is titled Mars Exploration, and this was in 1984. At that time, the CIA was very into remote viewing. This is Joe McGonagall, and he's one of the most famous remote viewers. If you don't know what remote viewing is, think Eleven from Stranger Things. The things this man has done by sitting in a room, meditating, and literally sending his mind, his consciousness to other areas in the world, it's wild. Oh, and if you don't think he's credible, he was given the Legion of Merit by the US government, so yeah. But back to the document. The CIA put him in a room and they gave him an envelope. The only details he was given for the test was the date and time and coordinates. So what did he see? By the way, again, all declassified, you can go read this document, but he saw pyramids. Again, over here, he saw massive pyramids. He saw a people that were large and they were thin, but he described them as only a shadow, as if they're there but not there. He basically describes the people talking that they're trying to find their way out. Essentially, you know, something was going on with Mars and the people were trying to escape. I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible, but again, it's fascinating because he was only given coordinates and then the CIA afterwards was like, yeah, we sent you to Mars in the past. So is this factor cap? Now it is important to note that what he saw was kind of like the popular idea for Mars in the 1980s, you know, science fiction realm of what Mars would have been like. But he claims, and the CIA claims, that he was given no information besides the coordinates, so it's interesting that it took him to Mars. He also found the largest submarine that was built by Russia, and apparently he even wrote down the exact size of the submarine, and that turned out to be correct as well. And that's when the CIA even said it wasn't possible. I feel like this is basically like astral projecting while being awake. These are some interesting photos posted by Sofia Vergara on set of AGT. It's not her that has everybody questioning these photos. It's the audience in the background. Could this be an example of demon face syndrome or demon syndrome? It's basically a rare condition that has been proven certain people have in which they look at people and their faces contort into what looks like a demon face to them. Could this be it? Or maybe the conspiracy is about reptilians there might be some truth to it or it's just a computer glitch take a look at this and tell me what you think Yeah, that one girl looked like really messed up. I have no clue, but if I had to guess off the top of my head, I would say that she used some kind of filter or edited the picture and maybe it like warped the background. But yeah, I really don't know. Okay, folks, I've been to CERN. CERN is very, very weird. I was actually there a couple of years ago when Russ Dizdar was still alive, well before COVID. So we're there at CERN and we're being uh, taken by a docent who's like basically just parroting what he's been told to say. So we're in this place 
where the statue of Shiva, Shiva is the Indian god of death, the, basically the destroyer. And I look at the docent and I go, what's this doing here? He has no answer for it at all. Basically, here's the bottom line, and this is something that we need to really delve into here. CERN is built on the site of the ancient temple of Apollyon. Tom Horn, who passed away last year, uh, very untimely, um, wrote about this. So CERN is at this ancient temple. They're going to open up and start using CERN and testing it the day of the eclipse. I mean, what are we looking at here? Is that deliberate? In my opinion, it's absolutely deliberate. Something is going on. Here's what I think is going on. They, the powers that be, are opening up CERN in coordination with the eclipse to open up a gateway, a portal. And that's what I think these sites really are all about. Now, when you go to the Serpent Mound in Ohio, it doesn't look anything like CERN, but it's ancient. And it's, and it's just in Ohio. And it's, it's the longest serpent effigy on the planet. Now, some people will dispute that that's fine, but it's the one that I go to. And that serpent mound is, the serpent is undulating and the serpent's mouth is open like this. Guess what? The whole thing is built on the solstices, the equinoxes, they're big into this. And these sites are charged. The site at CERN is charged. The Serpent Mount in Ohio is a charged site. I feel like you gotta be one wicked person if you work for CERN. But yeah, I completely agree with this guy. CERN is nothing but sinister. When they turn that hydrogen collider on, yeah, nothing good seems to come from it. Do y'all really think that everything we're seeing right now is by chance? It's not. Over the last few months, but especially the last few weeks, I've noticed a very disturbing chain of events all these things are happening sporadically, just being thrown at us while we lead up to this eclipse. Now, I know you're thinking it has nothing to do with one another. Yes, it does. A quick rewind so y'all can get into my mind. We had the Moscow attack that just happened. There's been a ton of mass shootings in the U.S. in the last month. We've had two huge, what they call geomagnetic storms in the last 30 days. The list of names of incriminated people keep getting longer and longer and longer. More on this later tonight. The royal family, the Rothschild, all these incredibly powerful dynasties having misfortune happen. And the red cows being sacrificed at the most opportune time ever. All while we await this eclipse. Which, if you didn't know, it says air travel could be disrupted from 7th to the 10th of April. Warned by the FAA, not me. Now, I've already explained this eclipse to you in great detail, from the Salems, to the Ninevehs, to the National Guard, and everything else. And I've showed you their supposed doomsday map, which aligns almost perfectly with their declassified document of the Adam and Eve story. Somehow they would know the future, it reminds me of the 40s when they were using astral projection to see what the opposition was doing along with Project Looking Glass, and all other sorts of divination while our wealthiest citizens in the U.S. have been preparing bunkers for a long time, but especially over the last month. You know, they say that Solomon is the wisest man to live, and he said there is nothing new under the sun. You may know it as history repeats itself. But I know one thing, we are in the last repeat. Again, I take you back to the great earthquakes of 1811 and 1812. That was three months after a total solar eclipse. Now here's what I came to say. We're not just looking at a physical alteration of the world and people, but spiritual. Before this came out, or before I got word of it, I had a huge warning that along with the false light, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the false movement, we are going to see demonic manifestations like never before. So why this? I saw this meme, and it really, really made sense. Pause to see for longer. What we're seeing right now in the U.S. and the whole world is demonic manifestations coming to pass, affecting the physical world in every single avenue we could even think about. That's what this was. Do you think this just happens randomly, just physically, just because? No. There's demons operating in high places. For the most part, I feel like they always predict this world ending stuff to happen. But yeah, as long as you have good faith, I'm sure you'll be just fine. With the... Uh battery packs in the human body. On one side, it's how many electrons are we putting in? And there are a lot of electron donors. Electron donors can be getting out in the sun, can be walking barefoot in the grass. It can be leaning up your body up against a tree because the tree has electrons and will donate them to you. 
hugging an animal. A common way that makes people in nursing homes feel better is to buy them a dog or a cat. They hold the dog or the cat and get electrons from it. The, the animal runs outside and recharges itself and brings some back to you. Moving water in is an electron donor, whereas still water tends to be an electron stealer. Moving air is an electron stealer. That's why when you ride in a convertible, you look really cool, but you're always tired when you get there because the wind is the, steals electrons from you. On one hand, we look at what things can put electrons in the body and then what things steal them. And again, the, the most common stealers are dental infections, emotional baggage, various toxins, particularly the toxins that we are getting from things like GMO foods and pesticides and other kinds of things, air pollution. There's a lot of toxins around us. And of course, one can almost include in the concept emotional baggage. They're toxins in a different way and that they rob us of voltage that we should be using for something else. If you haven't heard about grounding yet, I would definitely recommend looking into it. But going outside barefoot and touching the grass with your hands, I feel like is one of the easiest ways. And if you do this more frequently, then you'll notice that your body will start to feel a whole lot better. If you do this TikTok trend wrong, you could go to jail. But like, actually though. So this is the name of the audio if you wanna look at the trends yourself. People are posting slideshows starting it with, are you into me? And then a picture of their crush that they didn't know that they took and saying like I'm into you. And this one is pretty okay. This one's all right. Also have another variation where it's like this and then they have like all of their crushes information, which is, which definitely could be illegal. But the creepiest one I've seen is this one and it has almost 4 million likes. He transitions and the girl is sleeping in her bed. And you can kind of see that it's like through the blinds. But then she posted, she was like, did I just see myself in one of these videos? So she was probably in on it. Like you can see her stuffed animals here and then like her stuffed animals there. I think it's the same girl, but I think this one was staged. I also saw this one where like, it was a picture through a window. I don't know, I find it a little creepy. And if you do this trend wrong or go a little too far with it, like this one really concerns me could be like classified as stalking. I'm gonna guess that most of those people are dating and just purposely made the videos for the views. But yeah, I'm not gonna deny that there's some real life stalkers out there. That's for sure. They also don't want people to come after them for legal issues. So they put on the actual thing, it's this full. They wanna keep the packaging large so people feel like they're getting a lot. And sure enough, it's only that full. This is the definition of like, CYA <laughs> so that they don't have people suing them or claiming false advertisement or anything that could come out to a legal claim because they're definitely telling people right on the packaging, hey, it's only this full. Let's just be honest for a second. There's actually no reason to do that. The only reason to keep it in a large bottle is to try and slip it past some people who don't notice this disclaimer. Make a smaller bottle. This is the giant Costco pack of OxyClean. This is 10.1 ounces. This one is 9.8 ounces. And you'll notice this is the common path that they choose. They change the packaging and they'll say something like new concentrated formula or mega pack or better value. They're always trying to reassure people. Whenever there's any kind of reassurance on there, it's because they've changed something. They've shrunk it or they've reduced something in that packaging and it's for the same price. This one's really good. Take off the packaging and look, it's just like the sauce and extras. Implying, of course, when the packaging is on there that there's another row of sushi rolls here, but no, it's just the sauces. This is another example of trying to just keep the packaging exactly the same and have all this empty space up top so that as it's sitting on the shelf, it looks the same. It looks like the exact same product that it's right next to, but they've put less crackers in it. They've put less product in it. Ooh, this one really gets my goat. Look at that. It is, not only is it like all the way up here, but this much of that is like plastic packaging. And then it's only this bit that, you know, from here up to here, that is the actual deodorant corporate greed at its finest. We're all out here broke and fighting for basic needs and yet these rich companies can just do this stuff and get away with it. Come on now. Underneath the surface of the moon, there appears to be some gigantic or beam-like structures 30 meters beneath the surface. 
So is it, is it that they only stop there because that's as far as you can go? I mean, we don't know. But what's interesting is they all seem to almost have the same death. And there doesn't seem to be much of um, uh, a debris around the rim. Mm. Where's, where did all that debris go? Now, we have a black box audio, which I'll send to you so you can play this. In the black box audio from Apollo 11, one of the astronauts, I believe it was Neil, said, look at those convex domes down there. Then he says, I bet the people down there never get out. And that's on the redacted, printed uh, statement. They didn't redact that statement, and it's also in the audio. So that's made it into documentaries that I've done because I discovered that. So mm. I'll send you a copy of that. You can play it in this, okay. in this podcast. But what's interesting is that's a pretty blunt statement to make and knowing that it's being recorded and then they all right lovely people that's all i got for this video as always really hope you guys enjoyed this one and if you did don't forget to help your boy out and just hit that like button down there and if you're digging your boy's videos and you haven't already what you waiting for man go ahead and hit that subscribe button man this has been awesome you guys but yeah make sure to let me know all your thoughts about this one down there in that comment section 